This is a brief tutorial on mapping geological structures. It's really important to be able to map these structures. Um, today, we essentially use a computer for most of this sort of thing, but it is essential to have an understanding of, you know, the basic uh, calculations and how they're plotted um, and how the data is collected in the field is, is a, the topic of another um, tutorial. Um, so what do we do with these geological structures? <laughs> well, we uh, we get some sense of sort of the dominant structures uh, that occur in uh, certain tunnel conditions. Oftentimes we do some kind of statistical analysis to look at the joint sets and so on. And it's really important to understand, uh, give you some way of, of assessing whether wedges and so on are likely to form around your excavation, what their dimensions are, how they're going to intersect the excavation, which may be at different orientations. Um, and uh, really to, to aid us in doing sort of a limit equilibrium of a wedge and its stability. Okay, so the question is to basically to plot the uh, the joint set information on a stereo net and we're given dip and dip direction of the joint sets and a little bit of information about it. It's also asking us to plot the plane, uh, the pole to the plane. <clears throat> so we're going to plot both the plane and the pole to the plane. So if you recall briefly, um, basically the stereo net uh, is a way of visualizing a lower hemisphere of a sphere um, in two dimensions. And essentially the planes intersect the bottom of the lower hemisphere and in 2D they are projected as a great circle. Okay, so sort of a half moon arc type circle depending on uh, the dip and dip direction. And the pole of the plane is the normal to the plane, okay? So we have a great circle for the plane itself. And then, for example, <coughs> the pencil would be sort of the normal if, uh, if the pad here was the plane, right? And it's in the normal direction. And where that normal intersects the bottom of the lower hemispheric projection, we have a point. And that point is known as the pole. So if we have a, say, a great circle, okay, and a pole is somewhere over here, right, the, the pole's direction um, is 180 degrees from the direction of the plane itself, okay? So that's an easy thing to, to calculate. And the, the dip, well, first off, the plane and the pole intersect at 90 degrees, right, when we're talking about the dip. Um, so the dip of the plane um, plus the dip of the pole add up to be 90 degrees. Okay, so we'll, we'll explain that a bit more when I give you some examples. But what do we have here? We have four joint sets, J1, 2, 3, and 4. We have some dip angles. Okay, so that's the dip below the horizon. And we have some dip directions, which are compass angles. And they're always reported with three digits, um, so that really you don't get them confused with the dip. And then we have some comments here about it. Rough, clean joints, right? Gouge-filled joints, smooth, clear, uh, clean joints, moderately rough with minor infill joints, okay? But, uh, you know, you could have other structures as well. You could have faults, um, schistosity, um, bedding planes, you know, those kinds of things could also be included. Okay, so I have here a, um, a uh, blown up version of that stereo net. And we're going to use that um, to plot these structures. I'll try to do it so that we can sort of see both at the same time okay so uh, first off um, we have our stereo net here and 
let's draw in, uh, so we got zero and 360 degrees is north. And then we have 90 degrees is east. Um, and then south, um, we have 180 degrees. West, 270 degrees. And the dip below the horizon, you know, for something in the north is, uh, so it's zero, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, and 90 or vertical, okay? So something will plot on the rim if it's horizontal, like a horizontal bedding plane, and roll plot in the middle if it's uh, exactly vertical. Okay. All right. So let's look at our structures that we we want to plot here. So the first one has a. Uh, let's try and establish the dip direction first before we look at the dip. So we are talking about a dip direction of 262. So 262, okay? And the dip is 24, okay? So we're dipping 10, 20, 25 is the middle, 24, okay? Right there, right? So that is J1, and its dip is... Uh, and I'll do this in pen, make it a little nicer for you. J1, so we'll plot it with dip of 24, 262 is the dip direction. Okay? A little bit hard to see there. Okay. So now we want to plot the great circle. So we want to go and tick off two points at 90 degrees um, to have where the ends of the great circles intersect uh, the outside. Okay, so we're uh, eight degrees um, uh, from west. So we can just go eight degrees from north and approximately eight degrees from the south. Okay, so that is uh, essentially 90 degrees and your great circle is going to go through these two points and right through the apex described by the dip and dip direction and make a nice smooth clean circle now there are techniques where you can use onion paper or tracing paper and you can use a nice stereographic projection and rotate these and draw these beautiful great circles um, and, and really, I probably should be teaching you how to do that. But the reality is um, we are going to be using the computer for, for all of this stuff. And uh, essentially, I, I just want you to understand how they work and what the numbers are. So I'm not going to do that step of drawing the beautiful great circles. I'm instead simply going to crudely sketch it here. So that is uh, the great circle there, crudely drawn. Now I'll, I'll just go ahead and plot the pole. Okay, so the direction of the pole is 180 degrees from the direction of the apex um, of the great circle, right? So I could calculate that, or I could simply use a ruler going through the uh, apex and the center and, and get the direction. And for the angle, I could either, uh, you know, they, they, again, they are 90 degrees, the pole and the plane are 90 degrees apart, make a 90 degree angle. And um, <clears throat> I could simply subtract 90 from this and get the other dip, or instead of counting down, um, I could count up uh, the same dip amount 
and that will be uh, 90 degrees difference. So this one is 24 degrees, right, for J1. Okay, so I can make sure I pass through the apex point and through the center and 10, 24, okay, is about there. Okay, so I will use a different color here, red, for the J1 pole. So we have our great circle and we have our pole. Okay, let's do the same thing for J2. It's eight degrees, okay, right? And it has a dip of 31, 10, 20, 31. So now we want to find uh, where the great circle's going to intersect at the outside. So it's 8 degrees from north. We can go 8 degrees from west. And we can go 8 degrees from east. Okay. And we need to draw a great circle through that point there. Okay. So again, the computer does a much better job. Um, but here does a much better job, but let's see what we can do here. Okay, that is not too bad. So we will say that's J2 and it has a dip of 31 at a dip direction of 008. Okay, and you can see how the three digits comes in handy there. Now we'll draw the pole of that one. Okay, so we will simply line it up, pass through the middle, and what are we saying? 31. So we'll count 31 up this time. 10, 20, 31 degrees. Okay, right there. And that is the pole of J2. Okay, J2. All right, so let's do J3. It's 94 degrees, dip direction, 94. And a dip of 17 degrees. 10, 15, 17 is about here. Okay, and again, let's draw where it's going to uh, intersect at the outside. So we want to go four degrees um, past north. And we want to go four degrees past south and draw an intersection here. Okay, so let's label that one. Okay, that is J3, and that is 17 degree dip, 94 degree dip direction. Okay. And let's put the pole in here. So let's go through the center. And this time we're gonna go 17 degrees up. 10, 15, 17. Okay. So right here, we have the pole of J3. Okay. All right, so now we'll do the last one here. Okay, so J4 is in a direction of 132. 
So 90, 100, 110, 120, 130, 2. Okay. And that has a dip of 22. So 10, 22 is about here. Okay. And I'm going to actually label this one right now. So that's J4, 22, and 132. Okay. So uh, let's draw the intersection with the outside uh, so that we can draw a great circle. So we went past east by 10, 20, 30, 42 degrees. So let's do the same for north and south. 10, 20, 30, 42. 10, 20, 30, 42. Okay, so these are the points and then through uh, the apex there for the great circle. Okay. Okay, so that's J4, J4. All right, so now we want to draw the pole to that plane. Okay, so we're going to again line up the apex and go through the middle, and we want to go 22 degrees, 10, 22 degrees. Okay, and that is the pole of J4. So again, just a reminder, the computer draws certainly much prettier uh, structures and great circles than this. Um, but really, I want you to be able to understand how to plot them. Okay, so you get your great circles here, the, the apex points, and you know how to draw where they intersect the outside. Okay, and and uh, you know how to go and get the pole. So when you go 180 degrees around to get the direction of the pole. And uh, the dip is uh, basically 90 degrees difference. So actually, let me sort of show this as a calculation of, of the normal way to do it. So if you were going to look at the dip of the pole um, for say J1, for instance, okay, 90 degrees minus 24 degrees is 66 degrees, okay? So uh, J1, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 66 degrees, right? Or you could count 24 up and, you know, it, it accomplishes the exact same. Okay, so that is uh, the end of our exercise, and this is the sort of thing you do with uh, some joint sets. Um, if you have field data, you may have, you know, dozens or even hundreds of these structures to plot, and, and therefore uh, the computer is used to do that. Um, that is one of the reasons why plotting these as poles is so valuable because it really lends itself to sort of statistical analysis um, or drawing, you know, contours of density um, because they are represented as points. Whereas if you're looking at a wedge or a structure in, say, the sidewall of a tunnel, it is informative instead to look at the great circle. And even on these uh, stereo nets, you can plot the direction of your tunnel itself and really help to visualize what's going on with the structural geology.